How long does it normally take you to write a song? It really depends on what the topic is that I'm writing about. If it's something very personal to me, it usually comes quickly. But there are songs that have taken longer than that, um, you know, a week maybe. But for the most part, um, an hour to write a song, and it's, it's fun. It's one of my passions, and so it comes, it comes easily. Do you have time to have a social life, and what do you like to do when, when you have time for fun? Um, when I have time for fun, I'm, I'm big into the sports, so golf, like I said. We have a softball team when we're on the road, um, so we play a lot of softball as well. But, uh, yeah, we definitely have a lot of time just to go and, and watch movies and, and hang out. And we're each other's best friends, Kevin, Joe, and I. So we have a good time together, and we enjoy each other's company. Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who asked this question. I'll, I'll give you a hint. It came from somebody who put a lot of hearts on their phone. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do not, actually, so. crazy. Okay, moving on. What's your favorite book? Amazing. Uh, my favorite book, there's, there's this book that I have, it's, it's a thousand of the, the best quotes of all time. And it's not really like a story, obviously, but it's, it's got a lot of amazing quotes and, and I pull them out at times and I'll say them in interviews and then someone will say, is that, did you come up with that? And I'm like, no, no, sorry, I can't take credit. <laughs> But um, it's a great book, and I like it a lot. Why did you give away a guitar Friday in Charlotte? Um, I like to give away guitars if I see someone in the audience who I, I think would like it. And usually, <laughs> usually they're, they're playing the whole time air guitar. And so I figure <laughs> give them the real thing. And it's a fun thing to do. Um, a very, very sweet girl took it, and it was, it was good to see that she liked it. Mary Tyler Moore spoke a few months ago about the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation Children's Congress event you attended. What was it like talking to the president and testifying before Congress about your diabetes? That was an amazing thing to be a part of, um, such an honor, and I was very thankful to be a part of it. Um, I, I was a little nervous when I spoke, um, but it, it, was, it was great to see that it went over well, um, and I'm... I'm seen a lot of the kids that were there in some of the cities we've gone to, and uh, it's, it's great to see them again and to, to see that they're now doing things in their own community and in their states, and they're going out and trying to raise awareness and, and speak out about diabetes and, and the importance to, you know, fund research and, and hopefully find a cure one day. When will you come back to Washington to help us again? Uh, like diabetes, the legislative struggle is a daily thing. I'm not completely sure when I'm coming back um, next, but definitely would love to. This is my second visit in the last couple months, and uh, it's a great, great place to come to, to to speak out about important things like this. What was your favorite part of visiting the White House? I, I've always had this dream um, of becoming the president one day. I talk about it a lot. <laughs> And so just being there was, was kind of cool to see the history and, and just to, to be in the White House is obviously such an honor. We were able to play an acoustic set for the Obama daughters and, and some of their friends when they first went in, and it was cool. Okay, you've got another 20 or so years before you can run for president, but until then, where do you see yourself five years from now? 2040 to be exact. Um, <laughs> We, we sell bumper stickers at our concerts, say uh, Jonas 2040, so go pick one of those up and you can start the campaign. Um, see myself in 20 years, uh, making music, touring, um, thought about going to college. Um, obviously right now our schedule is a bit busy, but that, that's something that I'd love to do as well. But just um, enjoying this ride that I'm on and hopefully doing some more great things um, with diabetes. You've met a lot of famous people. Who would you most like to have dinner with? Hmm. I think meeting Stevie Wonder was obviously such an honor. Um, meeting President Obama was also uh, an honor. But um, 
Elvis Costello was a very intelligent person. I got to sit down with him and do something for Rolling Stone. And I'd love to sit down with him again and, and <clears throat> talk a little bit more. But he seems like a really great person. Can you show us your dog tag? <laughs> oh, maybe not. <laughs> it's kind of under this tie and shirt, so I won't do it right now. <laughs> but um, I, I have a special one that my family got me for Christmas a couple of years ago, so I wear that one, and then the ones that we made for Bear, actually. These are also very special. Um, these, these have been incredible. I see them at the shows and people wearing them, and they come up and, and show me that they've supported the cause and that they are either diabetic or that they're just there to, to um, raise awareness, and that means a lot to me. How do you keep going when you're feeling down? I think knowing that there are, there are people out there um, who have been encouraged or, or inspired by, by my story. And if there's a moment where I'm, I'm frustrated with my, my struggle with diabetes, I, I just look forward to that moment and, and know that that's coming and that means the world. Where do you get inspiration for your songs besides diabetes? try to pull inspiration from everything around us, um, relationships, personal things that we go through, whatever it may be, but just um, try to make it real to who we are. Okay, uh, this comes from Caroline, who has been a diabetic for 13 years. She says, I have been a diabetic for 13 years and my sisters always tell me to check my blood, blood sugar when they think I'm cranky. Do your brothers do this to you? My brothers are very sensitive uh, when it comes to diabetes. Um, they, they will ask sometimes if I've checked and if I need to check. Um, they're very good about being sensitive, though, and, and, and not being too, too rude. Um, you know, but I think it's all good. We, we have a great relationship with each other. And um, if, if there is something that they sense, I'm usually feeling it as well. And so I'll just go in and do it myself. Okay, this question comes from Whitney Wiseman, who is your age and is uh, working here as a reporter for the Woodrow Wilson High School Beacon. Nick, a report by the American Diabetes Association has suggested 2.2% of the U.S. population, or over 6 million people, have undiagnosed diabetes. Hundreds of thousands of people die every year from diabetes-related conditions. What do you think would be the best way to reach these people? I think there's a lot that we can do um, to raise awareness in our own circles in life, you know, our family, our friends, um, and then, you know, the reporters in the room on a, on a larger scale, um, just, just to try to raise awareness and do what we can to, to get people involved. Because um, everybody has a story when it comes to diabetes. I hear a lot of the time when someone comes up and says, can I get this sign for whoever, you know, their niece, their, their daughter, their whatever it is, um, they'll say, She's a diabetic, and, and she's watched you and, and really been encouraged by what you've had to say. And as far as the undiagnosed um, kids and, and people that have diabetes in the world, um, you know, if you can, go check it out. If you start to see the symptoms um, that I've talked about, you know, being thirsty, losing weight, having kind of a bad attitude, go to your doctor and, and, and check it out and see, see what the deal is because you just never know. Um, I got hit with it after having... 13 years of perfect medical history. So you just kind of never think it's going to come up, and then it, it may. So always be aware and be ready. You've traveled all over and no doubt have met a lot of different people. What are the, what are the common misconceptions people have about diabetes? I think some of the misconceptions are just that some people think they, they know what you can and cannot have. And like I said before, diabetes is manageable, so you're, you're able to eat. Um, for the most part, what, what you like, just as long as you take the right amount of insulin and make sure you're checking regularly afterwards. What advice would you give to someone who's just been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes? My, my first bit of advice would be, if you're an independent person like I am, um, don't be afraid to rely on other people as well, your family, your doctors, whoever it may be, but it's important to talk to other people about it too and, and let them help you in, in your struggle and your walk with diabetes.